welcome to episode zero of Mast Mayhem. I am one of your hosts, TF Joe and Mike, and joining me is Optimus Solo. Hello. Yes! Today we are going to be premiering the next new GCRN cartoon review podcast all about that classic 80s cartoon series, Mask. Yes! Mobile Armored Strike Command. Now, for those of you who may have already listened to the Powers of Grayskull episode zero, this is actually Kevin's first review, (laughs) full-on cartoon review podcast. Yes! (laughs) Is that all you're going to say? Yes! (laughs) No! Um, Yes, and this is the next big thing. This is what's yep. cool. This is what all the cool people are doing, talking about mask. Yep. So that's what we're doing because we're cool. So how did this come about? This was one of your ideas, wasn't it? Yes. Um, basically, this is a two-parter here. Um, but one thing was we had originally, obviously, we had our Transformers review shows, which you and Michael and Steve have been doing. Yes. All the way back from TFG1 to The Beast Unleashed to Tap, etc. And we all knew that was taking a break and whatever, and you and I had King had uh, developed the idea to do our Powers of Grayskull as the next multi-show review thing that would cover, right. you know, multiple... The next podcast series, yeah. Yeah, multiple cartoons. Um, and we had come up with a start date and whatnot. But we had a brief window of time in between the two, um, from between when TAP was going to end and when Powers of Grayskull was officially going to begin, we had a a window, a void to fill. And I think somewhere along the conversation, we were talking about stuff that we would like to cover. And the idea of mask came up and it's not that long of a, of a show. Um, and there was just one version of it. It's not like, you know, He-Man or Transformers where we've had multiple, multiple cartoons. So the idea came of putting something in that void and mask was the, uh, the choice And that kind of goes right into the other thing that we're going to be talking about is we both were fortunate enough to get our hands on some DVDs. Yes. uh, Before we get to that, we need to talk about the title of the show. When you first came up (laughs) with... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, no, hold on. Before you go a little behind the scenes for you all, um, whenever it comes to uh, naming a show, oh God, it, it probably takes us longer to come up with names of shows than it does to actually do the shows themselves, um, <laughs> because we have very different tastes in titles and acronyms. I never actually came up with any titles for this show. No, but you are very much an acronym freak. Well, if it makes sense. Okay. P- part of that isn't because I like the acronym freak part of it. Part of it is that... If it's something marketable, if it's something that sounds really good coming off the tongue, if it's something that I can build up in a fan page post or a blog post. People that know not what we're talking about, what we're meaning when we say acronyms is, for example, the Transformation Animation Podcast. He came up with that name so that it could be TAP, TAP. T-A-P, as an acronym because he has OCD, or not OCD, he's Rain Man when it comes to acronyms. Um So we had to come up with a name for this show, and I have no idea where you're going with that. We had to come up with a name for this show. I had nothing to do with the title or anything like that. You had told, you had sent me Masked Mayhem, and you had sent Eminem. And the first thing I said was, no, we are not having a show acronymed after a white rapper. No, instead we have a show acronymed after a candy that melts in your mouth and not in your hands yeah 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 yeah. this is not a podcast that's gonna melt in your mouth and not in your hand for the record though mass mayhem we do have periods after every letter right so the whole thing's an acronym right well you know what would be really cool if the listeners actually came up with sentences that go along with like like a sentence for m a sentence for a a sentence for s i feel like i'm in school again um, but, Shut up. but yeah, so we came up with the mass mayhem, or you might be seeing it as M and M. Yes. M and M. Yes. Yes. Uh, and going back to what Kevin was saying earlier, um, <clears throat> this is what really I sealed it. Oh yeah, I had contacted uh, Tom Chen at Shout Factory, and I said, my buddy Kevin and I are super fans of the cartoon Mask. We know you guys are doing a complete series. 
can we get some review copies and we'll write up a, a blog review, a, a written review of, of the DVD set. He said, sure. At this point, I had gotten a couple other things from Shout Factory. I know Steve Megatron has gotten a couple other things from Shout Factory. Um, so he sent out uh, a copy of Mask for me and a copy of Mask for you. We wrote up the review. That was the most detailed then... DVD review I've ever done. <laughs> And people should go check them out. We'll put yes, a link to I, it in the episode zero. Yeah, post. I will have the link to it in the uh, in, in the show notes. But that's really how this came about. We were like, well, we've got these DVD sets. Why not just review the show now? It was like a trifecta sh- of wonderfulness. Like we had a void in scheduling window. We had <laughs> yes. free DVDs from Shout Factory. Yes. And it's mask. I mean, it was something yeah. we wanted to cover anyways. Yeah. Now and It was the right length, too. Right. The Shout Factory set only has the first 65 episodes of the cartoon. That's season one. The racing season or season two, I believe you found on YouTube. So we this podcast will cover all 75 episodes of the cartoon. Yes, we will cover those last 10 in fast fashion, though, since it's racing. <laughs> <laughs> that only so so wait, 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 what are you saying here? 15-minute episodes? No, not Yikes. quite, but we will, we will get there uh, in a little bit later here in this episode. Um, so that's how it all came about. So now I just want to take a minute or two to talk about your general mask mayhem memories. I just want to get as many M's in there as possible. Your mask memories from your childhood. Without, Honestly, getting, without getting specifics into like characters or details of the show, right, just what right. do you remember about Mass from your childhood? Did you watch it, etc.? I, I remember having the toys. I remember having several of the different toys. I remember having Miles Mayhem's Venom Jet helicopter thingamajig. Um, I remember having Rhino as a kid. I actually, I think I was one of the only kids in my neighborhood that had Boulder Hill. I had the base. Nice. That was awesome. That was a great friggin' place. I never got too many playsets when I was a kid. Um, I, I didn't either. I think I think I only had two playsets as a kid. I had Gray Skull, which I still have today, even though it's seen better days, <laughs> and uh, and I had Boulder Hill, which I have not seen to this day. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> um, but honestly, the song, the intro song, just captures you. Um, even as a kid, I didn't like certain aspects of the show that we'll get into later. Um, certain immature Daniel like kids that, yeah, anyway. Um, but no, it was, as I said before, um, I forget where I said this, but it was a perfect mix of Transformers and GI Joe. Yes, it is a mix of a lot of things. Like I wasn't, I've, I know I've told this story before and I know you've heard it before. As a kid, I had a choice. I could either watch I could either watch Transformers, Super Giant Fighting Robots, or I could watch G.I. Joe, you know, fully articulated army men. And I chose Transformers. I still like G.I. Joe, Real American Hero. I still respect it for what it was. It's just as a kid, I, I maybe caught four, five episodes of that show, if that. Um, but when Mass came on in 1985... It was like they took Transformers and G.I. Joe and just smooshed them together. Smoosh! <laughs> um, I'm sure we'll have many more discussions about that theory. Just, yeah. And it was just awesome because <clears throat> I, I really loved it. I loved all the cars. I loved the scene. And, I, and I'll say this again more later. Um, I loved the scene of them, you know, assembling the team and all that. Uh, I don't know. What about you? It just has all the components of an epic 80s cartoon um you said that you mentioned the theme song this is easily top five 80s theme songs um and for a lot of people it would be one or two maybe um on my top 10 theme songs of the 80s list at behind the voice actors.com i even though it's one of my personal favorites i put it at number four um it's just an epic epic theme song like i said it has all the components of classic 80s show it has the you know the the sequence that takes place in every single episode, which is key in an 80s show. You had to have some type of uh, stock animation sequence that happened in every single episode, whether it be uh, He-Man lifting his sword, you know, whether it be um, uh, Silverhawks did something. I can't remember what it was, but every, every single show had something where you, you did the same, the the transformation sequence with Moonstar or Mumra, um, you had to have something that happened every time. And when they assembled the team, that was just something that was cool. It was something you could look forward to. And it, 
even though it was in every episode, it wasn't the exact same in every episode. Um, right. And we'll have to investigate that more as we go through. Um, so it had that. It had, like you said, the G.I. Joe or the Army, you know, human element. It had the machine element. Uh, it had a cool, one of the coolest toy lines in the 80s. And I got in a um, semi-debate uh, on Twitter a few, <laughs> oh, what was that, a month or two ago, I guess. Um, obviously, the, there's some He-Man fans we know out there on the Twitter world. And Count Marzo, and, you can call him out. Count Marzo and uh, <laughs> Pixel Dan. <laughs> And yeah. they are under this odd, crazy impression or understanding that He-Man somehow had the best toys ever, which I understand they're He-Man fans, but let's be honest, He-Man toys, I mean, they did have some cool, like, play sets and some stuff that did, some individual figures that did things, but they were basically just static stationary figures. Right. And for me, what separates action figures or toys for me when I was a kid was stuff that did something. Stuff that was more than just a figure. Because otherwise, there's no difference between, other than size, between like a He-Man figure, a G.I. Joe figure, um, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figure. But with Mask, there's a whole other thing. Like, the vehicles change. The vehicles are part, you know, car and part plane, or part truck and part ship. And I know I'm mixing those up, but, you know they had that ability to change and that made it cool for me when I was a kid. It was like transformers. It was something that had two forms. It's something that you could do more than just set up on a shelf and look at. Um, and I know we'll get into that a lot more probably later, but my point was it was a cool theme song. It (laughs) had epic 80 elements that made it a standout cartoon. It had kick ass toys, which I never had any. Um, I do now right now on my shelf sitting across from me have, both Matt Tracker and Miles Mayhem in my uh, 80s villain and hero collection. But uh, I was always jealous of my friend that had them. And I remember we used to go, we both had older sisters. And when they were at like Girl Scout meetings or stuff like that, that we got dragged to, he would bring them and we'd be playing with them on the cement floor or whatever. And it was cool. And I always wish I had some. Um, But yeah, my memories of Mask are positive and good. But I honestly don't remember anything about the actual episodes other than the repeated features. So I am very much looking forward to diving into individual episodes and dissecting this and either having all my memories trampled on or thinking maybe it'll be reaffirmed that it's as good as I remember it. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. (laughs) You agree with all of that? (laughs) Yes. I don't know. I'm very interested to see what happens when we go through this, um, which kind of leads us into what people can expect out of the Mass Mayhem show that we're bringing to you Yes, soon. now, we are going to be doing something slightly different with this episode, or with this, not this episode, with this podcast, because, for the most part, Kevin and I, out of the entire GCRN crew, we're the ones that have the most amount of time to talk with each other. I mean, hell, we spent between six and 25 hours talking to each other about the GCR and top 100 animated series. You know, we did all that. Um, And And we're also both control freaks. Yes. You more than me. Me me more so than he is. (laughs) Um, The way we're going to do this is I think we, we haven't really fully decided, but the thing that I brought up to you was since we have a lot of time each week, where we can dedicate maybe one or two nights where we'll actually pre-record the podcast episodes. So say, say this starts in April sometime, uh, the podcast starts in April. We, you know, end of middle of March, end of March, we may already have the first five episodes already recorded. The main point is that you will be getting consistent uh, on-time right. releases of these episodes because we will have them done ahead of time. So right. you, you're going to, have a set schedule that you can, you'll know when and where you can get your next episode of mass mayhem. Yes, Um, exactly. And give them the date that uh, we're airing our, our first episode. Well, episode zero will probably go up next week. I mean, episode one, episode one will the premiere date is Tuesday, April 10th, 2012. So you can expect this to fully kick off April of 2012 and um, give them the information as far as how long this is going to last. Like, when are we wrapping things up? 
be a 30 episode podcast and we're giving them to you on a weekly right is yep, that what we decided right. weekly basis so 30 weeks from whatever date he just said <laughs> <laughs> which was uh april, you said april what april 10th 2012 all right so <laughs> <laughs> hold on Do, 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 do. So we'll be ending in September sometime. Is that right? Does that sound right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to be going April to September of 2012. Yes, we had that all pre-planned uh, out what we were going to say right then. Um, so April to September of 2012 is when you can be expecting Mass Mayhem on a weekly basis. There will be no interruptions. There will be no hiatuses. There will be no delays. Like some other podcasts on this network. There will be no delays. Um, and... Uh, the podcast, the, as far as what each individual podcast will be, as far as what it's covering, um, you're going to see a little bit of differences between maybe some of the Transformers podcasts that you've had. We'll be varying. Um, most of our episodes will be covering two episodes of Mask. Um, right. About half will be covering two episodes. About half will be covering three. Yeah, and but then, because again, it goes back to our control freak issues. See, he likes to do three or four episodes per show. I like to do one or two. So we've compromised, and you'll be getting kind of a back and forth where some episodes will be covering two shows, some will be covering three. There will be one episode at the end where we cover four. Right. Um, but that's because we're going fast through those racing episodes. Yeah. I did want to bring up a couple episodes for people to be watching out for or looking out for just as a little sneak preview kind of thing. Um, right. Obviously, episode one, which we just gave the date for, um, we will use that to kind of do something different that I don't think we've ever done on any... I don't think you've ever done this on any of your other shows because usually we just jump in straight into the episodes. Yeah. We're using episode one to actually give you a... Because what happens if we don't do this is we spend half of the first episode talking about it anyway. Yeah. So we're going to break down all of our our thoughts on the characters our thoughts on the voice actors, our thoughts on just stuff in general on, on the episode or on the uh, series. And right. then we'll join, jump into episode one. So, so episode one of this podcast will be a combo of general talk and the actual first episode. Right. Um, another episode will be looking out for. So after episodes one through 25 will be season one. So the first 25 episodes of the podcast will all be about season one. We will use episode 26 to both recap season one and to preview season two. And then it'll just be 27 through 29. Just yep. three episodes to cover season two. <laughs> <laughs> and then episode 30 will be the final episode where we both recap season two and we recap the series overall. Did I miss anything? No. Nope. So that is what you can expect out of the mayhem that is masked. Yes. Which is hard to say. Masked. <laughs> I don't know why. I think when we get into epi when we get into the finale, episode 30, when we do the overall recap, that's kind of where I'm going to talk about the toys more in depth and the merchandising more in depth. I'm thinking that episode will have two parts. It'll have the actual cartoon series recap and then it will have like a merchandising section that we can talk about all the different, mer like everybody had a mass lunchbox or a mask thermos or, you know, all that, all those eighties properties had lunchboxes. Hmm. So, you know, we'll be talking about that in the finale. We're not actually going to dedicate an entire episode to the toys because as Kevin has said, he never really had them, even though he played with his friend's toys. I did have them, but it's been so long since I've seen. We don't have enough of them on hand to give them yeah. a, a valid discussion, but there will right. be talk, and I'm sure other people will chime in with comments and stuff on the web page as far as their thoughts on mass toys, and maybe we'll have another Twitter debate because um, that, that's fun <laughs> to have. I like those guys. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I'm excited. I think it'll be. Cool. I'm excited too. It's going to be pretty awesome. And the fact that we're going to be seeing all of these, not just on YouTube or something like that, besides those last couple of racing episodes, uh, the, we have 65 episodes in pristine Shout Factory DVD quality. Yes. Um, so we'll be able to get all kinds of cool, you know, screen caps and arts and yeah. sound clips and all kinds of fun goodness to throw at you along the way. Oh, yeah. And I guess the only question you'll have to answer is uh, if you're Team Mask or if you're Team Venom. 
Was that too much of a Twilight? <laughs> uh, it just came out in the theater the other day. I haven't seen it, but it okay. got me. On that thinking. note, we're going to head to some ads and we will come back to <laughs> close the mask. Show. You can now hear the Geekcast Radio Network while on the go with Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher is a free news and talk mobile app available for your smartphone. And when you download Stitcher to hear GeekCast Radio, you'll have a chance to win money. Downloading is quick and easy. Just find Stitcher in the App Store. During registration, hit the promo code box and enter GeekCast Radio, all one word, to get automatically entered to win $100. The latest episodes of the shows will be waiting for you and your favorites. You'll get access to lots of other amazing shows, too. Always available to you on demand. No syncing. It's Stitcher Smart Radio. Don't forget to enter promo code Keycast Radio when you register. Like animation? Come listen to Animation Aficionados. And if you disagree with us, you could be a guest on a future show. Available on iTunes, the Zoom Market, and AnimationAficionados.com. Movie Week in Review is the GeekCast Radio Network's weekly movie podcast. Steve and Mike take a look back on their favorite films and give you their thoughts. They also bring co-hosts at times. If you are a movie buff, listen to MWire only on GeekCastRadio.com. Tooncast is dedicated to the cartoons we grew up with. 100 episodes and more make up one of the GCRN's most popular podcasts. Join hosts TFG and Mike, Optimus Solo, Terror the Rising Star, and tons of guest hosts. We also have voice actor and writer interviews. Tune in to Tooncast as we look back on the cartoons that defined us as geeks. You can find Tooncast on iTunes and the web at www.geekcastradio.com. Tune in. 2012 marks the 30th anniversary for Masters of the Universe. We here at the GCRN are celebrating with a brand new series of podcasts. The Powers of Grayskull series will cover every episode of every MOTU cartoon. Yes, even that crappy new adventure stuff. Join Optimus Solo and TFC1 Mike as they tell tales of Eternia, discover the myths of Etheria, become masters in space, and finally masters of Grayskull. You can find the Pogs podcasts in iTunes and the web at www.geekcastradio.com. Good journey! So there you have it, folks. That's the introduction to Masked Mayhem. Yes! Sorry. Okay, you sounded like you were not doing something so pleasant over there just oh, then. Oh, my bad. Yeah, you're supposed to do that in your own privacy. Sorry. Thank you very much. I had a mask on. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, April 10th, 2012 is when Masked Mayhem will premiere. Uh, we will have weekly episodes airing every Tuesday on GeekCast Radio Network. You can find the RSS link in the show note post, and you can find uh, the um, the review that Kevin and I did uh, in the show notes as well. Thank you for joining us here on Mast Mayhem. There are some ways you can contact with us or leave feedback for the show. Visit the website, geekcastradio.com. You can comment on each episode post. You can stream the shows now in Stitcher. Go to stitcher.com. It's a free app for your mobile phone. Leave the show's feedback in iTunes. Please do this. Become a fan on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash geekcast or radio network. Call the voicemail line. Tell us the show you're leaving the message for and your name. 502-526-5821. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Mast Mayhem and wish you'll join us in April when we'll be kicking off the podcast and talking about the characters as well as the review of the first episode, that being The Death Stone. Yes. <laughs> I was kind of cracking there for a second, stupid voice. Uh, for now, I am TFG and Mike with... Optimus Solo. Saying, tune up your supervision as podcasting is the ultimate weapon. Illusion is the ultimate weapon. 